All right, guys, I have another video with this system here, which is just a little demo system with some bluegills and stuff in it, uh, where I explain the whole thing. And the main reason I did that video was to explain how to do ebb and flow without a bell siphon. And it actually created more questions than it did answers, I think. And maybe it's because I explained the whole thing instead of just the bell siphon issue. So we get lucky, and it just happens to be running right now. This is the overflow. This pump right now is running. This pump only runs about 15 minutes out of every hour, out of every two hours. So it's on for 15. It goes off for an hour 45. That's plenty of time to keep this hydrated up here and to keep these plants, you know, fed with nutrient. And the reason we do this is bell siphons, U siphons, all the different siphons I've seen have a tendency to stick, to malfunction, to have problems, to get stuck at the top or stuck at the bottom. And either you got your water filled all the way up in your ebb and flow bed nonstop and your roots are, are getting suffocated, or the water's all the way down here at the very bottom and they're not getting hydrated enough. And that happens to an outdoor system in the summer, boy, you're in trouble really fast. This system is dead simple and it's something that all the hydroponics people do and it doesn't seem like any of the aquaponics people do it. As you can see right there, there is the overflow. This sets the height right here, this, this one. Way down in the bottom, there's a bulkhead. So there's two holes in this tank instead of one. That's the biggest difference. And if I come down here and explain this, this is your delivery right here, and this is your overflow. So this one goes in the bottom right there through that bulkhead. And there's no, it, it's all the way at the bottom. There's no pipe on the other side of it at all. So it's, it's completely to the bottom. This one here has a pipe sticking out of it about that long that sets the high tide line, I guess you would call it, about right there. The light's not good there, but I'm doing my best. So about, you know, 75% of the way up the side of this, this, this tub. The water then comes out of here. There's the other end of it's overflowing right there. It's on that timer on the wall right there. When that timer shuts off, and we can just manually kill it, I think I did, yep. So now you see that water goes to a trickle and it stops. Now, don't worry about those bubbles. That's a totally unrelated thing. It's an air, air pump that's in there. Now, right now you can see that water level's dropping. See, there's the stand-up pipe. Now you can see it coming out of the top of the water. You see all the way down there, watch. You're going to get a great drain, perfect drain. And we can run this where the pump is not heavily restricted, where you're trying to throttle down your flow and you're putting back pressure on your pump and reducing its life cycle. We're always going to vent extra pressure. I'll talk about that in a second. But you can see that water's just running right back out. It's coming out of the... Instead of going out like a bell siphon and having a siphon over that, where it's going to create a suction, it's just going right back out the hole that it was delivered through. Now, your pumps, and your pump is down here at the bottom of this pipe, they'll always come with a backflow preventer. And they come with a backflow preventer because if they shut off, water will backflow through them. In a lot of situations, you won't want that. And this is exactly what you want. So you don't put it in. So you go straight without a backflow preventer, and the, the flow will, will basically flow back out. The thing is, underneath there, sometimes it's above water, sometimes it's below water. If you see right there, I have a, a, a straight valve that's coming off of a T. Remember I said about pressure? Even though I can run this pump about as fast as I want to, I can overrun it where it'll be overflowing water over the side. So I vent the extra pressure with that swing valve and I tighten it just enough so I get the flow that I'm looking for in here, which again, you can see now it's done draining. It's ebbed and it's flowed, right? It's filled and it's drained and it can't fail. There's no moving parts other than that timer. Now these timers, three, four years, they start to wear out with the little, you know, the little tips and stuff, but they're an $8 timer. If you just, you know, replace them about once every 36 months, you just don't have to worry about that. Or when they fail, have one on the shelf. That's what I do. I don't replace them until they go bad, but sometimes they'll stop working for you. Uh, but it's, it's a five, I mean, literally you unplug it, plug it back in and you're done, right? It's that fast to do. And you can set whatever frequency you want. I think I said an hour on, an hour 45 off. I actually have this system looking at that timer. I have it running 15 minutes on, 45 off. So it's running once an hour for 15 minutes, six hours a day total. And you can see it's growing a little bit of shard and some uh, watercress and what have you. Now, this again, this system was set up only as an educational tool. I'll probably leave it here until March. I have another workshop coming up. When students come in, I like them to be able to look at this and learn this. But if you're doing aquaponics, this won't work for every application. Sometimes you have a lot of tanks. Uh, and this can create its own issues with capacity of your reserve tank. 
Most of the time, though, you'll be able to do this if you have maybe too much bed for it all to ebb and flow in one cycle or you're taking too much out of your reserve. What you can do then is simply set up maybe two or three small pumps running these because they don't have to be big pumps and stagger the timer. So pump one goes off and then it's like 15 minutes of rest and pump two goes off. And then that way you don't take too much from your reserve. That will be seldom the case. You have to worry about that. But I have but one system I put in where I did have to worry about that. Other than that, guys, this is as simple as it gets. I think people struggle with it because it's so simple. Again, water comes in right from that one. It overflows. That sets the upper limit of the water. That overflows out. When it stops, since there's no pressure, the water goes right back down the hole it came in from. And there's entire kits made for hydroponics people. But aquaponics people don't seem to really know much about this. I know I did aquaponics for three years before I ever saw this. And I've had to fight bell siphons. I've made dozens of different variations. And I've definitely gotten better at making uh, bell siphons that are less likely to fail. But I've never found anything at all. In all the years I've been doing this, anything as simple as that. Yeah, you got to use an extra bulkhead. Yeah, you have a second pump. But boy, I'll tell you what, the peace of mind with not having to worry about this at all, is pretty cool. Let's see, there's one of our little bluegills in there. Give you a little tour of the tank here at the end. Hopefully, hopefully this makes sense to you guys. If you have any questions, please post them. I'll try to answer it. But I could not come up with a simpler foolproof system if I tried. In fact, I quit trying because this one works so good.